Well, good morning again. Excited to look out and see your eager faces for the message that God has placed upon my heart for you. The foundation comes from the letter of the Apostle Paul to the Ephesians. It's the very first chapter, verses 3 through 14. I'm excited for you to be a part of this, that we might understand a little bit more of our role in this world as we respond to God's call. I've entitled it Different Meanings. What was going through my mind when we started all of this uh, preparation this week or this morning was that so many things in different times seem to mean different things as we change centuries, change times, change our societies. And so what's said at one time and one place may be totally different to what's going on now and in our place. So the question keeps coming to me, what does it mean? How often are we called upon to make decisions based on our understanding of the vocabulary and the jargon of our own culture based on the words of a different culture? What does it mean to understand God, who he is, what he's about? What does it mean when people say, be blessed? We're blessed. Have a blessed day. What does it mean to be chosen by God? What does it mean to be adopted by God as one of God's children? Questions that loom in every heart at one time or another. Paul writes to the small church in Ephesus. This morning I want to read to you from the message, a poetic, very clear understanding. How blessed is God, and what a blessing He is. He's like the Father of our Master, Jesus Christ, and takes us to high places of blessings in Him. Long before He laid down earth's foundations, he had us in mind, had settled on us as the focus of his love, to be made whole and holy by his love. Long, long ago, he decided to adopt us into his family through Jesus Christ. What pleasure he took in planning this. He wanted us to enter into celebration of his lavish gift giving by the hand of his beloved son, because the sacrifice of the Messiah his blood poured out on the altar of the cross. We're a free people, free of penalties and punishments, chalked up by our misdeeds. And not just barely free either, abundantly free. He thought of everything, provided for us everything we could possibly need, letting us in on the plans he took such delight in making it. He set it out before us in Christ, a long-range plan in which everything would be brought together and summed up in Him, everything in deepest heaven, everything on the planet Earth. It is in Christ that we find out who we are and what we are living for. Long before we first heard of Christ, we got our hopes up. He had his eyes on us, had designs on us for glorious living. Part of the overall purpose he's working out in everything and everyone. It's in Christ that you once heard the truth and believed it, the message of your salvation. Having believed you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is the deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to praise his glory. It is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's start with our own understanding of blessings. What do, what do blessings mean to you? You can go through a drive-in window and you pay your bill and you wait for a moment and then a little girl at the window passes you a bag and she says, have a, have a blessed day. A young mother talking with others 
describes her three new babies. I am so blessed. A man receives the promotion. A promotion he's been anticipating for years. And what does he say? I feel so blessed. And then the Apostle Paul, trying to clear it up in his day and in his time. What a blessing he is. The Father, the Creator of our Master, Jesus Christ, who takes us to the high places of blessing in Him. What about the sarcasm that we hear, sometimes we even share, when somebody says something we don't appreciate or something that we don't like, what do we respond to them? Bless your heart. In love, Jesus set up adoption papers way ahead of us, signed by Christ himself when, with his sacrifice. What does that really mean? It means that once we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, it's all down here, hill from there, right? Well, maybe not so downhill from there, because life still goes on. It's possible, but not probable, that we live an enchanted life from that point on. I want to share a story with you I found in the research this week. Uh, a man named Al Keeney was sharing his, his uh, experience. He went to the local supermarket, and like the ones we have around here, they have bag boys that put the, the groceries into the bag and uh, then encourage that you let them take the groceries to the car for you. Well, one of their bag boys is a victim of Down syndrome. And the bag boy takes his job so seriously, he's very conscientious, he's very courteous, and he, he bags the, the groceries in a very special way, giving them the care they need, putting them into the cart. So we go back to Al. When he finishes paying for it, and the, groceries are in the cart, he starts to take the cart to go on. But the bag boy says to him, I insist, let me take the, the groceries to your car for you. So Al allows that. They walk out together. They're talking as they go. Get to the, pops the trunk open. The bag boy takes each package out and carefully places it in his trunk in a very, a very responsible way. Closes the trunk easy. And Al looks at him and says to the bag boy, thank you so much. You've been a big help. The bag boy turns and starts to leave, and all of a sudden, he stops, turns back, walks back over, gives Al a big hug. And he says, I like you. Before Al could even think about what he said, I like you too. They were touching events for both people. Let's understand what happened. Al reflects upon a bag boy, a certain bag boy, with a special gift or victim of a of an of an illness. But God claims that we will be whole when we go to heaven. So Al wants to know in his own heart and mind, I know the bad boy will be in heaven, the Down syndrome bad boy. I know he will be there, but if God creates us whole in heaven, will I even know who he is? Will he look different? Will he act different? Will he talk different? What will I be presented with when I get to heaven? So I did some thinking on my own. When I get to heaven, and I'm made whole, I've shown you pictures many times of what I look like as a kid, the flaming red hair, wearing husky pants. Now, I don't know whether you'll see me with a shiny forehead or flaming red hair. I just know I'll be there when you arrive. Different meanings. What does it mean to be whole? Does that mean that we will have an image that will be recognizable? A persona that will be recognizable because we believe in the resurrection of the body. Will you know us when you see us in heaven? Do the qualities that we have on earth 
then shines brightest when we get to heaven. Something that we'll all be anxious to know when we arrive. You see, the message from Jesus that stands out, premier of all, is given in the Beatitudes. We learn so much as Jesus preaches and God incarnate lives out the way life is meant to be. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. And the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. And the pure of heart will see God, and the pacemakers will be called the children of God. Also blessed are those who endure persecution, insults, and falsely say evil because of the Son. Rejoice. Do you believe what people mean when they say, bless you to you? It's food for thought, isn't it? What do they really mean when they say, we are blessed? What do they really say when bless you is the response that they give? It makes me think of a person that was uh, in the news in the time of the presidency of Richard Nixon. Remember Charles Colson, Chuck Colson? He was, um, he was king of the world for a short time before the nightmares of Watergate. That was around 1972. He would have said to you that I am blessed. I have power, I have fame, I have affluence. But do those things really mean that he was blessed? Blessing collapses sometimes when we place an earthly value on it and his collapse. And as a result of the Watergate incident, he ended up in prison with a very long term. God had a plan. I'm not saying that everybody has to go to prison to act out God's plan, but Chuck Colson started the uh, prison ministry that is now the largest mini prison ministry in the world. There are, there are 50,000 volunteers that work in his organization in 88 different countries. That's a blessing. And he wrote about it in his book, Born Again. And he revealed his true calling was absolutely not politics. It was a blessing and God's will for him to reach out to those in the prisons, those incarcerated and the families of them. And it changes his life from earthly to divine in the blessings that he received. Many times the things that we consider blessings are not the blessings that are in the center of God's will for our own lives. Like Chuck Colson, the Apostle Paul spent a lot of his life incarcerated. Paul's acclamation was to give God the glory for all things, good and bad, because Paul knew there was a purpose, there was a will for his life, yeah. and it was guided and directed by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Different meanings. All the time, we're challenge to understand what does this mean and what does this mean to me if I love God you see it's all about our calling and our calling is never about whipped cream with a cherry on top it's about life that we live in a world that is around us it's not about being part of a football team or a cheerleader or to be chosen a brother or sister in a fraternity or a sorority. But it is about the bragging rights that we live out in our lifestyle as followers of Jesus Christ. I think everybody will remember the classic play, Fiddler on the Roof. And the main character had this, had this habit of arguing with God. And one of his statements was, I know that we are the chosen people, but once in a while, could you just choose somebody else? 
Because you see, being chosen by God is not always the easy road. Do you remember the posters of Uncle Sam? They started back in World War II to recruit young, young men and young women to, to serve our country in a time of distress. What does it look like? A gray-bearded man with a red, white, and blue flag a suit and a big top hat. But most importantly, he was pointing his finger at whoever was there looking at the poster. Uncle Sam wants you. But here's the deal. That wanting you was for democracy. It was not for a pros prosperous and long life. However, it was an honorable calling, and it made the world a safer place. It was a calling for freedom. Different meanings from different times, from different people, with different thoughts, with different words. Sometimes it's not easy to understand what people are saying to us or about us. But one more different meaning. Adoption. Paul says to the Ephesians, God is adopting you as one of God's children. It's a story, I'm sure. The Sunday school was, the teacher was there registering young children to come into his class for the coming year. And two young men walked up to the table, ready to sign up, and he asked them their names. They told him. One was older and one was younger. He asked the birth dates. The older one spoke for his brother. The brother said, we're both seven. My birthday is April 8th, 1976. My brother's birthday is April 20th, 1976. April 8th, April 20th. So the Sunday school teacher scratches his head, I'm confused. The older brother again speaks for the younger. He says, we were confused also. So the two of us went to my dad and we asked him, we know that one of us is adopted because it's not possible for us to be born together that far apart. And the father's response was this. Your mother and I love you both the same. Because of that, for the life of me, I can't remember which one of you is adopted and which one of you is not. You see, that's how God considers us. Children adopted by God to live out a life with our brothers and sisters in Christ. And God loves us the same, no matter. No matter what. No matter how life treats us. No matter the choices we make. But it does mean that as children of God, we do have a life purpose. We do have an opportunity to take those different meanings and become ambassadors for Jesus Christ. And that's always the same thing. And all the children said, Amen. 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 <clears throat>